Welcome to the R video tutorial on mathematical integration in R. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, so quick review here. Uh, we've been playing with functions and looping. We did a while loop. We've done for loops. So here's basics of the function. You have a function. You put some inputs into it. Do some stuff to create an output. Return the output. Uh, for for loops, we build a container first. Uh, we know where to start and stop. We're going to do stuff over and over and over. Store the result in the container. Okay, and these are skills that we're going to need as well uh, for mathematical integration. So, um, finding the area under the curve is important in statistics, and this is mathematical uh, integration or definite integral, is finding the uh, area under the curve because in statistics, the areas represent probabilities if we have a density curve. So, finding these areas is very important, especially when you don't have, or knowing how to do this, when you don't have very nice distributions. Okay, so to find the distribution or find the probability between the probability that uh, random variable x is between a and b, you would use integration uh, if you have a density. Uh, so here f of x is a probability density, so the probability that uh, x is between a and b can be found using this new, uh, technique of integrating it. And this is all well and good, except if you have a density that's not very nice. So for example, the normal density, which we uh, all love, uh, isn't that nice to integrate and actually if you try to do this you can't uh, there's no analytical way to do this uh, and so it's analytically intractable so we're going to actually look back at the definition of what integration actually means and then try to come up with a way to do this uh, in r easily okay so suppose we want the area between uh, minus 1, it should be minus 1, and minus 2. But anyway, uh, you can see the picture here. I could put just a rectangle from minus 2 to minus 1 and have it at the highest point of the function in that range. And if you notice, all of this area here is too much. So our area is too big. The alternative is I could take the, where the lowest point is in that interval and make a rectangle there. And if you notice, I miss all of this area here. So I end up with too little of uh, area. So why not just add more rectangles? So this is better than the other one because if we notice, we've gained all of this. So all of this is gone now from our previous picture. Uh, so here's our picture. If I move it on, you can see I just added in a whole, remove this area, and then over here I added in more area. And again, we can do this again by adding more rectangles, and notice we get closer, it's still too big, but it's a whole lot less than it was. Uh, and then we can get even farther, and if we wanted to go even farther, this is what the picture looks like. And this is dividing the interval up into 16 little intervals. And notice it's getting quite close. Even though it's too big on the left and a little too little on the uh, right, these are awful close to each other. And this is the idea of breaking this interval up, right? That's what we're doing. We're taking the interval, we're breaking it up, and we're making rectangles at each point. Okay? And so the point of this is, is when we break this interval up, we need to do what's called a partition, which means that we've broken it up so that the entire space is covered, but we actually have a whole bunch of small areas in it. So here we go. So a Riemann sum. So let f be a function from r to r, and this is just in general. This doesn't have to be for uh, numerical integration or uh, for statistics. The, so we have a function that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers. Um, it's defined on a closed interval a, b, which is what we're interested in, is integrating between a and b. So what you would do is you would take your x-axis, that's why these are x's, and we would chop it up into a whole bunch of little intervals, okay? So it's a partition, and a partition means that it spans the entire interval and it doesn't overlap anywhere. Uh, these only overlap right at the individual points, so the space where it overlaps is measure zero for those of you who knows what that means. All right, so we have this requirement that it's in an ordered space in the sense that x0 is less than x1, less than x2, all the way up to xp, because this is how big our partition is, and we go from a all the way to b. All right, so what we have here is delta x. This is how wide this interval is. Each little interval is potentially a different width. Nobody said it had to be the same width, uh, so keep that in mind. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same width, but for our practices, we'll probably make it the same width. 
uh, then what we would do is inside of each one of these intervals, we would pull a point and we would evaluate the function at that point. So this is gonna be our height. And if you remember, the area of a rectangle is height time width. So here's the height and here's the width, right? So we have a height, we have a width, and all we do is we add up all of these little rectangles and we end up with a Riemann sum. And this is the general definition of a Riemann sum. Uh, the key is, is we need to take it one step further, which is add a limit to it, okay? So if we increase P, which is the size of our partition, so the partition becomes finer and finer. Notice we went from a solid rectangle and we kept breaking it up and breaking it up and breaking it up. That's a finer partition. Uh, uh, with the delta XI becoming incredibly small, then we can take the limit of this Riemann sum and it can be used to calculate the area. And that's actually what we're going to do, is we're going to use this formula to calculate the area of various things. Uh, however, in this video, we're not going to do it in R because we're trying to keep the video short and just go over the idea. In the next video, we'll actually pull this off and you'll see that it's kind of ridiculously easy. But anyway, let's move on to the next video.